Thank you. Have a look, thank you. Good morning. We want to always remember. This um, year, I would like to um, lift up the name of Jesus. And I wanted, to, wanted us to sing some songs that lifted up his name. So our first song this morning is going to be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Please sing along with us. Jesus' name.
474, take the name of Jesus with you. Page 474. Lift him high, 
scripture for this morning is taken from Daniel 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. So ends the scripture. Happy Sabbath, and a happy new year. Well, we're sounding kind of poorly out there today. Well, you're leading me right into my next point, and that is to pinch yourself. Go ahead, pinch yourself. Now, some of you don't know how to do that. Pinch yourself. Pinch it. It's easy. Just pinch yourself. Now, the reaction that you should have now, or can very well have, is that the Lord has allowed us to live into an additional year. So now if you didn't get it, pinch yourself one more time. That's you still here. Now as I think about that, and the concerns we might have had in 2007, the issues that may have come and gone, we have much to thank the Lord for. Is that right? That's true. Now, as we look forward in 2008, he must still have something for us to do, to be, and to become. Would you say amen? Now, if you haven't smiled at anyone yet, take a moment, look on either side of you and say, no, you can't smile if you have it. Look on either side of you and just smile at someone. Just smile, 2008 smile. The Lord has been good to us. We'd like to just think of things we'd like to uh, present to him in a time of prayer that we have today. Our hearts are saddened with uh, Joan and Steve uh, Hutchinson, sister and brother, who have lost their uncle. I understand they're traveling to um, rally with the family uh, at the uh, funeral and uh, burial of their uncle. There are a number in our congregation who have uh, cancer, and we certainly want to lift all of them um, uh, up in prayer. See, Sylvia is with us, and um, we're thankful for that. Sylvia, we're thankful to see you, Sylvia. Great smile that you have there. We want to keep Harry Walker in prayer as well. Harry is uh, probably going to be homebound, and we want to just keep him lifted up in prayer uh, all year long. Our praise team will have a special song for us to sing, and they'll be encouraging us to join hands across the aisle, and let's just be obedient in that regard. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. God Almighty, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel, Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, creator of all things seen and unseen, Lord, we come into your house this morning so thankful to make it into a new year. We have many here who had to struggle to get to this point. We pray for your strength to help us continue into the new year and to serve you, for that's what we're really here for. We have many joys and concerns as we finish 2007 and begin 2008. Those who are thankful for for making it here, for successes, and for all the blessings you bestowed upon us, but also for those who right now are struggling struggling with health issues, financial issues, family issues. We know of Sylvia Brooks, who's here in our house today. 
We're so thankful that she's here. And we pray for Brother Walker, who can't be here, who's homebound, who's struggling with cancer. Lord, please lift him up. We pray for Pastor Boyd, who injured his knee seriously. We pray that you will return him to health and vigor and return him to ministering to others. Lord, as we begin this year, help us to focus on what's really important in this life. Help us to focus on serving you and serving others and not to focus on ourselves. We know it's hard as troubles beset us, as uh, the, the, the crush of regular everyday life comes in on us to keep our focus on you, but we pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us the strength. Keep us focused during this year, especially in these end times. Lord, please keep us focused on you and your message. Help us to be good disciples. Help us to be giving people. Help us to be loving people. We are so thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who lifts us up every day. We pray that you will fill us with the Holy Spirit and guide us in our interactions as we, as we worship you today, as we celebrate your Sabbath, and as we go out into the world to minister. We thank you, Lord, and we pray all these things in Jesus' loving name. Amen. In his arms. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There is no place I'd rather, rather be. Scott for bringing both our prayer and scripture reading this morning. It is now time for a children's story. Children, please come up front. Hi, guys. Happy New Year's, guys. Look at you. Hello, Madison. It's a new year, and Auntie Audrey has put together a whole bunch of cool stories from the Bibles for you. We're starting out January with God Provides. And today, we're going to be talking about the children of Israel and how God provided a way for them to get out of Egypt. Oh, bad old Pharaoh had an iron grip on those poor Israelites. But God sent Moses and Aaron to say, you let my people go. But bad old Pharaoh didn't let them go. Oh, no, he didn't. He said, who is God that I should obey him? He didn't know. He didn't know that the God up in heaven will do anything for his people. Let me tell you, he had them. He gave them stinky water. 
He gave them frogs and sores and boils. Oh, my goodness. You know, when God goes into battle for you, he, nothing can stop him. He is like this mighty force, Heather. And he said, let him go or else. And guess what Jesus, guess what he did? He had to let him go. Yes, he did. Let him go. Pharaoh was so distraught when God was done with him, he could do absolutely nothing but let God's people go. And he will do the same thing for us. When things are going bad, God said, you know what, Casey? You don't worry. I got your back. And when you think that everybody is against you, guess who's for you? Who's for you? Always, always. So, when you think that there is no other way, Jesus will make a way because he said, I am with you always. So, as we started 2008, just remember the first story God provide a way. He'll provide it for you and your mommy and your teachers and your friends and all of your family and parents and friends. I have been recruiting vigorously for the past two years to provide people and volunteers who tell stories to our children. You've had two years to volunteer. I will be pulling up a draft And I've got a list, and in case you haven't gotten my email, the gloves are off. And Miss Audrey's on a rampage. And in case you haven't noticed, my back is turned. So if you're shy or scared of the crowd behind you, you don't have to worry about them. These are the beautiful faces you have to worry about. Look at them. They're our children. And I expect great things. Don't be Brother Gaskins. Amen. Now, Madison and Heather. Oh, by the way, my Heather turns four today. Oh, yes. Okay, Heather, come up here and pray. We have more prayers to look forward to. Now, close your eyes, everyone. Heather is going to pray. Dear Lord, thank you, say, thank you to me, Mommy and Daddy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good job. Okay, boys and girls, go back to your seat and happy Sabbath. Please join us in our meditation song, Draw Me Close to You.
risen Lord to the cross where thou hast died draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord to thy precious leading to accomplish this morning out of the word as I said on last Sabbath what I preached for second service last Sabbath is now going to be presented for first service when I presented for first service last Sabbath we presented for second service but both sermons have been restructured We enter into the new year under the theme, You'd Better Get Ready. Say that, everybody. Ready. Say it like you mean it. Yeah, you'd better get ready. And this morning, I'm going to deal with the subject, The Sabbath Under Attack. It's last week's second sermon but with a little bit different emphasis the Sabbath under attack let me repeat and I tell you the Word of God travels many places I came into the office on Monday and on Tuesday Tuesday was especially nice because nobody was here but me and the Lord I got a lot done Monday morning I got a call from Australia a person had heard the sermon Tuesday morning I got a call from England a person had heard the sermon was evening at home I got a call from Indonesia a person had heard the sermon what I'm saying to you ladies and gentlemen is that when certain subjects are talked about, God's Spirit gets busy. And let me say to you again what I have said before. That in these last days, as far as God is concerned, there are only two important subjects. The book Great Controversy, Alma Chamberlain, makes that clear the subject of the Sabbath and the subject of the state of the dead those two subjects stir Satan's wrath more than any other one identifies God's creative power and the other the other deals with God's final answer to sin which is death there is no eternal soul the soul that sinneth it shall die those two subjects more than any other will divide this planet into two camps those who believe those who do not believe those who understand those who do not understand and so I'm not surprised at the calls I got from long distance last week we took a fresh look at the Sabbath and I need my team to get geared up to roll in just a few seconds and this morning I want to begin with a sermon a sermon by somebody else let's pray 
Father, speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. T.D. Jakes. I think one of the most important things that our faith offers to us today is a resting place. A resting place that doesn't begin in the New Testament, but actually goes all the way back to the Old Testament. It is that resting place that David talks about in Psalms 23. When he braggadociously makes a statement about God that I so deeply appreciate, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth. He restoreth my soul. He talks about a place of rest where I can drink from still waters and find green grass. Not because of my own strength and ingenuity, but because of the relationship that, that I have with the shepherd himself. He describes me as sheep, uh, dumb, dependent, needing leadership, needing guidance, not to insult my intelligence but to unlock the vulnerability that I have between me and God, that comparatively all of my wisdom is foolishness in the mind of God, that I find myself engaged in a conflict so overwhelming that if God doesn't provide a solution for me, I will never get out on my own. I said, I will never get out on my own. Say that with me. I will never get out on my own. You'd be surprised how long you can live and not know that. Keep thinking that you can get yourself out or you're going to find somebody who can get you out. Eventually you come to a point that you recognize that you will never get out on your own. And after a series of bad relationships, you begin to realize that other people can't get you out either. You come to them with your problem, you find out that they have as many or more problems as you are. If you're broke, they're lame. <laughs> if you're distraught, they're depressed. Sooner or later you recognize that all of us are carrying something that only God can lift up off of us. And so ultimately you find yourself in a place where you need the Lord in your life in a significant and a powerful way. I'm going to rush through this message. Time does not allow me to do it justice. But there are certain elements out of this message that I think that you need to understand that are very profound and very powerful. I took the time to read Jeremiah because Jeremiah brings up an issue about the Sabbath that I would like to talk about for a few moments. He says that the Lord commands us to take heed to yourselves that we bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it by the gates of Jerusalem. He said, I don't want you to bear any burdens. No, I don't want to see you up under a load uh, on the Sabbath day. I don't want to see you coming into my presence bogged down with things that would stop you from having a real worship experience with me. He said, don't bring things out of your house, issues out of your house where you are laden down with this issue and that issue, unable to unpack where you've been, and where you've come from, walking along with loads of packages on you. Your heart is overwhelmed. He says, I want you to come to the point of freedom in me. Somebody say freedom. freedom. You must understand that one of the signs of the covenant that God had with Israel in the Old Testament was the Sabbath day. Now, I grew up in the Baptist church, in a very traditional Baptist church at that, and I grew up going to Sunday school and vacation Bible school. And when I went to vacation Bible school and Sunday school, they taught me about the Sabbath day. And there was a great debate going on at that time as to what day was the real day to worship God. That debate continues to this day and has existed all the way back uh, to the Old Testament, Old Testament theology as to what is the right day uh, to worship God. In spite of the fact that the New Testament tells us not to give respect of days, we're still debating over what day we ought to worship. I had run into some good friends uh, as a young man as a seven, that were seven-day Adventists, and I still have a lot of friends who worship the Lord uh, on Saturday, which technically is the Sabbath day. And there was a great deal of debate going on with them as to uh, what was the right day to worship God. I have absolutely no problem with anybody who chooses to go to church on Saturday. Uh, I have no problem with that. I would never debate that. I would never argue about it. I can pass by the Seventh-day Adventist church and wave and respect and appreciate their right to worship uh, on Saturday, uh, probably because I also uh, worship on Saturday. Yeah, I do. I hope that does not exempt me from an opportunity to serve as your pastor, but I, I worship on Saturday. I always 
ever since I've been saved. I've worshiped uh, on Saturday and, uh, and Friday and, and, and Thursday and generally on Wednesday too and, 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 and Tuesday uh, and, and Monday uh, as well and, and, and Sunday. Sunday also, I worship on Sunday. I don't have to come to a building to be in worship. I'm, I worship the Lord wherever I am and wherever I go. But there's a great deal of uh, debate about it. And I, I can remember that uh, my Sunday school teacher took me to the New Testament and showed me a scripture in the book of Acts that it said on the first day of the week, uh, they came together in the book of Acts. And she did that to make me understand that she said that the New Testament Sabbath was Sunday and that it was the New Testament Sabbath because it was a new beginning and that Christ rose from the dead on the third day and from the New Testament forward, uh, we should worship on Sunday. And while I respect that reasoning and that philosophy, I certainly fall short of making a doctrine out of that because I think that there is a deeper revelation. Uh, yeah, there, there's a deeper revelation. If you'll bear with me a few minutes, I'm going to pull a couple of threads and share some things with you that I think will be helpful to you. Uh, first of all, you must remember that it was on the seventh day in the book of Genesis that God ceased from his labor and entered into rest. He stopped working and entered into his rest in the book of Genesis. And the Bible says in the book of Exodus, there is no mention of the Sabbath day from the book of Genesis to the book of Exodus when God gives the Ten Commandments. And when he gives the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus, he says, remember the Sabbath day, which looks back at the book of Genesis. And then he says the word to, which looks forward to the future. Remember the Sabbath day backwards to Keep it holy unto the Lord. In that statement in the Ten Commandments, we have a look backwards and a look forward. Now, I want to take a moment and glance back at what the Sabbath day was. And then I want to take a moment and look forward at what the Sabbath day is. And then I'm going to get to my text and I'll get out of your way. The Sabbath day was that announcement that God made to himself and to the world that he was finished. That the work was complete. That all things were done and that they were set in order that he had rested from all of his labor and all of his toil. It was his announcement to all the created things that the creation was completed, that he had set in motion a cycle that was sufficient to stop him from needing to get up and do anything else, that he was complete, that he was through. And God rested from all of his labor. Not so much that we would have a brief rest and go back to work again because God was through with creation. When God finished with creation, we were to enter into the rest with him. And man entered into the rest with the Lord on the seventh day and stayed in that state of rest. And there is no mention of days or works or labors anymore until Adam sinned. And when Adam sinned in the garden, we see God working, walking again. The voice of the Lord walking through the cool of the garden saying, Adam, where art thou? In essence, my brothers and sisters, sin broke the rest on the Sabbath day. Sin caused God to get up from his rest and move out and find an innocent lamb and slay the lamb and cover Adam's sin uh, from his nakedness with the coats of skin from an innocent animal. And God says in Exodus, as he gives the Ten Commandments, to remember the Sabbath day. Remember that sin breaks rest. Remember that sin breaks rest. Remember that sin breaks down communion and fellowship. Remember that sin causes you to fall into obscurity and God has to come get you out of your trouble. Remember that sin will alienate you from the peace and the joy and the comfort that you ought to have down inside of your soul. Remember that sin robbed you from the Sabbath of staying in the Garden of Eden where you didn't have to toil in the field nor work for your food where everything was brought to you. Remember what sin did to you. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember what all I did for you and how sin ruined everything for you and destroyed the rest from you. Don't start worshiping the Sabbath day for Jesus says to us that the Sabbath was not made, that, that man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath for the man. That the man is the more important issue, not the day, but the man. Are you following what I'm saying to you? The Sabbath represents rest unto the Lord.
the new and popular approach on the part of many outstanding well-known pastors to the issue of the Sabbath. First of all, the new approach is that the rest spoken of in Scripture is a relationship, not a day. Did you pick that up? Secondly, the rest is a freedom from burdens. Third, he told us, there is a debate over which day is the Sabbath, but Romans 14 makes that debate unnecessary. How would you handle Romans 14? It says that God is no respecter of a day. I'm going to preach a sermon that will deal with every text in the Bible that mentions the first day of the week. But what would you do with it? The fourth point of the sermon, the most interesting to me, the seventh day technically is the Sabbath. Did you pick that up? So today you're worshiping on the technical Sabbath. Fifth in the sermon was the idea that you can worship any day, which of course is not debatable. Because the fourth commandment does not say remember the Sabbath day to worship. It says remember the Sabbath day to do what? And you can't keep every day holy. You can worship any day. But keeping a day holy means number one, no work. See, do you notice the subtle twisting? If the issue is worship, then Dr. Jakes is right and we can worship any day we want. Well, we knew that. We, we didn't need to hear a sermon to know that. You can worship any day, any hour, any moment, but you can't keep every day holy. His next point was, the Sabbath represents a completed or finished work. Yes, spiritually it does. Seven, his point was, sin breaks the relationship with God. Absolutely correct. Eight, Man is more important than the day. I won't answer that one for you. Nine, Acts pictures people gathering on the first day of the week, and therefore, that one text proves that Sunday is the Sabbath of the New Testament. And then last but not least, his tenth point, the rest is no longer a day, but a symbol of salvation wrought by Christ. I ask you again, what you going to do with that? Because this is what many of your friends are being taught. And they believe it. But more than that, some Seventh-day Adventists are beginning to waver. What's the big deal about a day? Well, of course, Lana, the answer to that is really quite simple. If God had not made it a big deal, neither would I. <laughs> what we learned last week is that there's always been resistance on the part of even true Sabbath keepers to entering into the real meaning and benefit of the Sabbath. You see, the Sabbath really is more than a day. Think about it now. It is absolutely, Deborah Sanford, impossible for you to come into this church on Saturday morning, the Sabbath, and keep the Sabbath holy if you've not had an experience with God all week long. You can't suddenly turn into a Christian on the seventh day of the week. And so the Sabbath does represent a completed work in your life, and all you're doing, Brother Minor, on the Sabbath morning is celebrating your relationship with God all week long. And if you're not doing that, you are wasting your time to come in here. You are just a day keeper, and you've never kept the Sabbath in your life. We can worship on any day. But the fourth commandment calls for us to keep the Sabbath day holy. And Al, what does that mean? See, what, 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 what do you do to keep the Sabbath holy? And do you understand, Katete, what that means? 
What changes in your home when the sun sets on Friday? Do you keep the Sabbath day holy? And do you know what that means? Now remember, Barbara, the holiness is in the day. I don't want you to forget that, folk. There's nothing you do to make it holy. There are things you do that honor that it is holy. Are you listening to your pastor? And I'm going to keep saying that without apology till you get it. I don't want you telling any of your friends that you, by what you do, make the seventh day holy. God, by what he did, made it holy. All you do is accept the holiness God put in it and celebrate it. Every Sabbath, celebrate it. Come on, somebody, celebrate it. But it's in the day. It's in the day. Today, for the first service, I want to demonstrate, as you just saw, but I want to demonstrate further that the Sabbath that many of you love so much is under attack. This day of mental rest, this day of, 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 of God's rest is, is under attack. And let us reestablish the fact that this rest remains. Now quick, take your Bible. Take your Bible. I'm going to move real fast. It's going to frustrate some of you, but you ought to know these texts anyhow. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Got to move fast. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Thank you, team. That was excellent the way you displayed that for me on the screen. God bless you. I just wouldn't trade you for $2 million. Maybe three, but not $2 million. <laughs> A wonderful, hardworking team. They worked hard to produce that tape for me. Genesis 2, 1 through 3 makes it clear that the heavens were finished, verse 1. On the seventh day, verse 2, what did God do? Let's read. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he did what? Rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And then verse 3, what did he do? And blessed the seventh day and sanctified. It's in the day. I can't stress that too much. It's in the day. Surrogate, it's not because of what you and your children and your husband do. It's in the day. It's in the day. And you'll see that before the sermon is over. It's in the day. There's something in these 24 hours, Meshach, that's not in any other 24-hour period. It's in the day. And I have baptized people into this church who've told me, years before they understood the seven day was the Sabbath, they would tell me they had a feeling about doing certain things on Saturday. They don't understand why. I've baptized people like that. They could not, there was something about the day. They, they were not comfortable. There's holiness in the day. Now I want you to join me for a minute. Now I'm going to do something. I want us to sniff in the holiness. Come on. Yes, sir. It's in the day. It's in the air. It's in the fiber and fabric of the day. You can't add to or take from what God did. Come on, somebody. It's his stuff. Man is too puny. Man is too sinful to ever make anything holy. What we touch is made unholy. But you cannot, you cannot, you can, you can, you can trample on it. You can, you can, you can ignore it. But you can't add to it. It's holy anyhow because the God who made it is holy. And what he touches is holy. Exodus 20, verse 8. <coughs> Exodus 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to do what? Okay, we're to keep it the way God made it. Notice he said, keep it. See, James, he said, keep it. So the keeping means it's already there. Keep it the way God made it. Exodus 20, 9 and 10. Read, six days shalt thou labor, and do what? But the, but the what? Not the seventh eon, not the seventh period, not the seventh dispensation, but the seventh, it's a day. It's a day. Brother Jake's bless his heart is trying to make it into something else beside a day. But it's a day. It's a day. Exodus 31, verse 18. Exodus 31, 
Exodus 31, verse 18. These texts, all these texts ought to be marked in your Bible. 31, verse 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of commuting with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written how, church? And in that law, written by God's finger, honey, Sue, is the fourth commandment, which teaches the Sabbath. So, so Keith, God took his day and put it in his law. So if you're going to change the day, you have to change the? Come on, somebody. You have to do what? Change the? And Jesus said, think not that I came to destroy the law. So you cannot disconnect the Sabbath from the law. To change the Sabbath is to change the? And the thing was so precious to him that when he came down with the law, found the Israelites cutting up, Moses upset, takes the tablets and breaks them. Remember that? Then in Exodus 34, look what God did. Go there. Exodus 34, verse 1. You're reading. Come on, come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, I need everybody, hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. You broke the tables, Moses, so you fix that. And you would think the next sentence, dear, he would say, now Moses, put on those tables what I gave you before. What does the next sentence say? And I, who's I? Will do what? Write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. You remake the tables, but I'll rewrite the law. God never trusts his law to anybody else but himself. And in that law, the fourth commandment says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So twice God protected his Sabbath in his law. And then in John 1, 1 through 3, you're going there. Now you should be able to do this yourself. John 1, 1 through 3. We get this astounding announcement. Starting with verse 1, in John 1, and you're reading together, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made which was made. The Jesus who made the first week and the, and the first Sabbath now comes to earth as man. And lives on this earth as man. What did he do, the God who made the first week and made the first Sabbath and came to earth as man, Lucy, then what did he do while he was here? Luke 4 and verse 16. Folks, there's nothing clearer in the Bible than the Sabbath truth. Nothing. It's not hard to find it, not difficult to understand it. Luke 4, 16, I need everybody reading. What does the Bible say? And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. He was faithful on the Sabbath that he created himself and left no information as to a change, so much so that by the time you get to Luke 23 and verse 54, and he's dead in the grave, his, 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 his disciples won't even touch his body, but go home and keep the Sabbath according to the commandment. So if there was a change by Jesus, as Dr. Jakes inferred, his disciples didn't know it. They had not been told. And so that's why in Hebrews 4, you're going there, verses 4 through 9. I don't have time to help you with that. He makes it clear in verse 9, therefore, Lila, the Sabbath remaineth. So in the Bible, the Sabbath is at the beginning, and at the end of the Bible, the Sabbath still remains. I'll say amen for you. In fact, the Sabbath is so precious that Isaiah says in Isaiah 62, 22, and 23, when we get to the new earth, we'll still keep the Sabbath. Now, my title is The Sabbath Under Attack. Let me share with you now in the first service what the second service heard. The reason why the Bible says, remember this Sabbath day to keep it holy is because God anticipated there would be a forgetting. 
Joanne, not just by the people of the earth, but by his own people. Some of us, when the sun sets on Friday evening, are still in the process of forgetting the Sabbath. We're so busy, we forget the sun is set. So busy, we forget to have worship to open the Sabbath. So busy, we forget to see certain activities on the Sabbath. Forgetting the Sabbath is not just a problem of people who worship on the first day of the week. Forgetting the Sabbath is a big problem for people who are supposed to remember the Sabbath. Well, I'll say amen. Amen. The first leading proponent, and what I'm about to present to you now, really, it, it really presents a problem for people like Dr. Jakes. But you see, he spoke of his Baptist background. See, unfortunately, folks, here's, here's the problem for Protestants. The problem for Protestants is what I'm, is what I'm getting ready to tell you. Pro Protestants who observe the first day of the week have made for themselves a serious problem. And the reason they've made themselves a problem is that the idea of Sunday keeping did not come from them. Nor did it come from the Bible. Let me show you. Let me show you. The Catholic Church teaches the roots of Sunday. Let's put it up there. Ready? Let's read. This is directly from the catechism that the Catholic Church uses to train its converts. Read. Question. Which is the Sabbath day? Answer. Saturday is the Sabbath day. What day do the Catholics say is the Sabbath day? Continue. Question. Read. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the because the because the transfer the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. That's a problem for every Protestant. The people who invented Sunday keeping say clearly that it came from who? Them. Them. Let's go further. Let's go further. Uh, another part of the catechism. Question, read. Have you any other way of proving that the Catholic Church has power to institute festivals of precept? People are questioning the Catholic Church's right to make festivals. They say, we have proof we have right. What is your proof? Answer. Ah, you got to make that bigger. Got to make that bigger. Read. Had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of the Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is how much? That's a problem for Protestants. That's a problem for Protestants. If the people who created the day, Butler, say there is no scripture, then how in the world are Protestants coming up with scripture? And by the way, that transfer on the part of the Catholic Church took, way, took place way back in 431 A.D. before there was any Protestant. There wasn't a Protestant until the 1500s. So 1,100 years before there was a Protestant, the Catholics said, there's no scripture for this, we just did it. Yeah. And this is what you, see, this is what you need to understand so that you're not easily swayed by stuff. 
And so the minute a Protestant person starts running to the Bible, trying to scuffle up some scripture like something in Acts or Romans, I just start smiling. I say to them, you're 1,100 years too late. The inventors of the day admit there is how much scripture? None. So don't get your brain all twisted up. Somebody comes to you with something, you start trying to answer. Just, just be calm. And I say to a lot of my, I have a lot of friends who are, who are Protestant pastors. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't talk to me on this subject. I said to one recently, I said, you find me a Catholic priest that'll change his mind, I'll listen to you. Because his church, which is 1,100 years older than yours, says there's no scripture. So the attack on the Sabbath, folk, cannot be scriptural. It might be something else, but it can't be scriptural. But our opening passage, Daniel 7.25, does predict a day will come when somebody would seek to change what? Times and laws. Well, the Hebrew says the time in the law. And there's only one commandment in the law that deals with time. It's the fourth. Let's keep going. Now, unless I be, 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 unless I be misunderstood, uh, 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 I make no attack on the Catholic Church. I simply read their documents. And we're dealing with the issue, what is the attack? On September 9th, 2007, the new pope, Pope Benedict XVI, had a mass in Vienna, Austria. Here's what he said. Let's read. Without Sunday worship, we cannot live. Ah! You have to absorb this. This was said just past some September, September. Without Sunday worship, we cannot do what? Continue. Give the soul to Sunday, give Sunday its soul. Continuing, warning against the evils of allowing Sunday to become just a part of the weekend, the Pope said people need to have a spiritual focus during the first day of the week or else leisure time will just become wasted time. You see, the Pope is very aware of something that you and I are aware of. And that is the fact that for most people, Sunday is just going to church. When the church is empty on Sunday, the malls are filled. Now, we took time in the first service last week to show you that early Sunday observance was much more sacred. But my concern for you is that many of us listen to the pastor are starting to treat God's true Sabbath like a lot of folk treat the Sunday. We go to church, and after church is over, we do whatever we're big enough to do. But the text says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it how? Like God made it. It's like I tell my sons, in the rare times, very rare times, I'll let them use my car. If I give you the car full of gas, keep it. Keep it holy. Bring it back just like you got it, Meshach. Needle was on full. Bring it back full. Keep it like I gave it to you. Keep the Sabbath like he gave it to you. Come on, somebody. So, 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 let's go forth. We got, we got more from the Pope. More from the Pope. Come on. Sunday worship he mourned was not just a precept to be casually adhered to, but a, but a, for how many people? Continue. The Pope has been very vocal about Europe's Christian or Catholic roots and is pushing to have them included. The facts are is that the Pope was pushing that the new European constitution for the common market 
include a clause making the first day of the week a day of mandatory rest. Now, on November 14 and 15 of last year, there was a special meeting held at the Pope John Paul Cultural Center. This meeting was given and paid for by the Vatican, given and paid for by the Vatican, given and paid for by the Vatican. There were two speakers at this meeting. One is a cardinal, and the agenda of that meeting was to point out the state that our world is in, number one, to bring Israel back to obedience, number two, and to push an amendment to the American Constitution, number three, for a national day of rest. So what's happening while you're sitting here? Two things are going on. The Vatican is pushing for a national day of rest in the European Constitution. The Vatican is pushing for a national day of rest in the American Constitution. Mandatory day of rest. You'd better get ready. You'd better get ready. See, it's always interesting to me, folk. Some of us have not really studied the Bible like we ought. Satan, Ron, is always connected with force. God is always connected with invitation. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Whosoever will, let him come. But the devil is a dictator. He forces and presses and pushes. And straps your hands behind you and your mind locks it so you have no choice at all. So while we worship, key acts are taking place. And by the way, there are now over 51 senators ready and willing to vote Sunday as a national day of rest. Now that meeting should interest all of us who are Seventh-day worshipers. But more you should be interested in who was there. Nancy Pelosi was there. Who is Nancy Pelosi? Pelosi? She's three heartbeats from the presidency. The president dies, vice president. He dies, the speaker of the house becomes president of this nation. She was at that meeting. John McCain, who as of the Iowa caucus is rising in the polls as the Republicans' choice, was at that meeting. Al Gore, ever heard of him? Was at that meeting. But also, interestingly enough, Eragu, at that same meeting was Dr. James Dobson and Pat Robertson. I find it interesting that at such a meeting where they're pushing for a national day of rest, a meeting sponsored by the Vatican, top Protestants are there. See, ultimately, what Protestants will do with the Sabbath is what they've been doing all along. Follow the Vatican. The Sabbath is under attack. After Judge Roy Moore was forced to remove the Ten Commandment monument in Montgomery, Alabama, Pat Robertson published a book entitled The Ten Offenses. In that book, he devoted an entire chapter to the issue of the Fourth Commandment. In that chapter, he argues that Sunday law should be a federal matter. Now, by the way, I've been reading, Pat Robertson does not believe in separation of church and state. Neither did Jerry Falwell. They believe that this nation has erred to separate church and state and that one of the reasons why this nation is in trouble is because we've rejected Christ and his Sabbath. They're not talking about the seventh day.
The United States government moved away from the concept of a federal law for worship day in the 19th century and then again in 1961. But as you found out in last week's sermon, every state in this country except two has Sunday blue laws in existence, never abrogated, that could be enforced any day of the week. Well, let's finish today. How does the Bible address these issues? Go to Matthew 5, 17 through 19. And you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, why, why the Bible? And you notice, I'm not, you know, really shouting at you in this sermon. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you. Well, I'm reminding you, I've said nothing new. But in Matthew 5, you see, the, the, there's a reason, Michael, why everything in the Bible is in the Bible. No, no, nothing is there by accident. And so, Henry Branch, when, 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 when Jesus is presenting his philosophy of salvation, which is what you find in the, uh, in the uh, Sermon on the Mount, and he sounds very, very new. He sounds very fresh. He's, he, he's saying it's about love and so forth. And, and the Pharisees are getting very nervous because they're very law-bound, very, very legalistic. And so Jesus reads their minds and finally, as he gets into a sermon, says, just a minute now, don't think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to do what? Make it more meaningful. See, see, you see, you see, Don, God does want us to remember the Sabbath day, Eric, to keep it holy, Leroy, but he doesn't want us to be legalistic about it. He wants that day to be a joy. Come on, somebody. A joy and a blessing, something we look forward to. This is why the Lord releases you on the Sabbath day from the cooking, from the TV, from the radio, from the shopping. He's trying to give you rest. So when the young man came to my door last night, knocking, son of sets, right now, I just got up off our knees having worship, coming, selling. I was able to be just as nice I said, I wish you had come just an hour earlier. I'm just smiling. He said, oh? I said, yes. I said, we could have talked about your product. I said, but now the sun has set and the Sabbath hours have come. Of course, he had the most puzzled look on his face. <laughs> and I said, I am just, I said, I'm free from buying and selling. He looked at me, he said, you're what? I said, I'm free. From buying, my wife said, "My, you just laugh." I said, "From buying and selling." And he just, black young man, just he was just he had the most puzzled look. He said, "Okay." <laughs> he finally got got his mind together. He said, "Well, can I come back?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "You come back on Sunday." He said, "I will talk about your product, free, free." Are you enjoying your freedom? Or, or do you let your day get all messed up with stuff, the same stuff that drives you crazy during the week? Do you drag it? See, that's what Jake's was right. Don't bring your burden into the Sabbath. I like that part of his sermon. You can preach that to me every day. Yeah, release yourself from the burden on the Sabbath. Walk in CPC, free at last, free at last, thank God. God Almighty, free at last, at least for 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, don't let it cross your mind. In the book of Acts, we see the disciples. And we'll take time with that in a later sermon. But all through Acts, the disciples worshiped with Jews and Gentiles on the Sabbath. There's only one day of worship ever mentioned in the, in the New Testament. It's the Sabbath. Let alone 
a day of holiness. And so we must steward our rest day. We must steward our rest day. Uh, let's read them that last statement and then close out. The most optimum time for body rest. Let's put that up there. There's a gentleman named Kevin Trudeau. He's not a Christian. In fact, he believes in this Eastern religion. He's not a Christian. So he's not trying to push a day. He's a scientist. What is he? He wrote a book entitled Natural Cures that they don't want you to know about. Here's what he found out in his research. Read. The most optimum time for the body to rest is when the sun is no longer shining. I say amen to that. Read on. Ideally, a person should rest and sleep when the sun goes down and arise when the sun comes up. Ellen White says we should be up with the sun. And I believe in that. My wife will tell you, I pop out of bed. I don't like to waste time in the daytime in bed. Let's get at it. Excuse me. I get excited about another day. Get going. Read on. This, the natural cycle, however, most people's lifestyles do not allow this. We've gotten all messed up. Read on. Therefore, they are resting and sleeping at non-optimal times. Keep going with the statement. Each week, no, 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 no. This, this is what he found out. See, I told you it's in the day. Each week, a lunar cycle occurs at sundown every Friday evening. Ah! This is science. They've discovered something happens with the moon every Friday. Read on. At sundown every Friday, ending at sundown every Saturday. This period is absolutely the most ideal time for the body to <laughs> <Woo! clears throat> Hallelujah Jesus it's in the day it's in the day and you rob yourself of what God intended when you violate his day He's offered you something, something your body needs, something your mind needs, something your, don't forget the Sabbath, something your rest needs. It's in the day. It's in the day. God and Nadine want you on Friday evening to go to sleep like a baby because the moon is doing something for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, moon. I don't know what you're doing, but thank you for it. It's in the day. That's why the devil, John Coleman, is trying to attack the Sabbath in your home, my brother. You're a father and a provider. He knows you and your land and your children can experience something special from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. He does not want you to gain from it. He wants you to go into Sunday as tired as you end of the week. But if you open your heart to Jesus, Kelvin, you and Don, open your heart to Jesus and little, uh, 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 little Jelani. Open your heart to Jesus in your home and say, now come in and give me that special rest that you put in the day. I want that rest. What about you? I said I want that rest. What about you? Yeah. Father, thank you for the word. Now your head is bowed. Your eyes are closed. Last Sabbath, at the end of the sermon, this very sermon that you've heard, second service, you heard it now in the first. I made a different appeal. I'm going to make it to you now. I don't have a lot of time, so don't waste your time responding if you're going to respond. We need to know what we believe. And we need to be able to explain it to ourselves and others. And so Pastor Wright is going to start something that used to be a part of my ministry here when I first became pastor. 
We used to have Bible study classes every Sabbath afternoon. There'd be 20, 30, 40 people. And we'd take time and study these subjects and let you talk back to me and me to you. Let you raise the questions that a lot of your friends raise. Let you raise the questions that you've never understood yourself. If you'd like to be a part of such a Bible study, I was amazed last Sabbath, 65 people signed up. If some of you here would like to be a part of such a special Bible study, I'd like for you to stand up and come forward and don't waste time. If you're coming, come on. Clerk, I need a clerk ready to get these names. Come forward. Come forward. You want to be in the special Bible study class, studying God's Word, learning for yourself how to explain what you believe, in the process strengthening your own faith. So as you get the sheet, sign it, pass it on. Come on, come on up. Press forward, folks, so those who are coming behind you. Don't be afraid of me. I got on deodorant and cologne. <laughs> come on up. The rest of us stand. We're going to pray. This is serious. It's a serious commitment. And this is not a class where I'm going to call you and beg you and worry you. We're going to meet this afternoon after second service and decide on the best time for us. Once we decided that, we'll have class. If two show up, I'm there. If 20 show up, I'm there. If 200 show up, I'm there. And we're going to study this Bible together, Don. Isn't it a wonderful book? I'm going to show you how to take a subject like the Sabbath, Nadine, and just lay it out so it's so clear to anybody. Second coming. We'll deal with speaking in tongues. All the stuff will take the Bible. Let you ask me every crazy question that's ever been in your head. Sometimes I have the answer. A lot of times I won't. Then we'll search it out together. Is that all right? Studying God. Why? Because our theme for this year is you'd better get ready. As soon as you sign your name, pass it on to somebody else. Let's pray. Father God, who am I? Nobody. Who are you? Everybody and everything. And so we lift up you up. We lift you up and ourselves to you. This pitiful uh, attempted at preaching by this, this pastor, this, 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 this poor effort opens our minds. But it also gives us confidence. What a, what a powerful truth we have. It, 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 it's a sure word. We don't have to be hesitant and apologetic. Kind, we need to be kind. We don't want to offend people. But the word is the word. So bless those who've come forward. Bless those who'll be studying on their own. Keep us all safe unto you. In Christ's name, amen. If you've signed the sheet going around, go back to your seat. If you've not signed it, stay up here until you've signed it. Was that good for you this morning? Where's that precious Joan Hutchison? I think I saw her face here. Joan, I know I've run over time, so you take all the time you want to take with Sabbath school, but some things we got to get done. Thank you. We look up, <coughs> we look out, and we see that the young people, together with their uh, Deacon are ready to receive the morning's tithe and free will offering. The praise team will be assembling here at the front and will receive the Lord's tithe and offering from our church family this morning. Praise team, as you get assembled, feel free to lead us.
let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning for offering song we're going to do in the name of Jesus. Please sing along. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great day. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can for us when we call on that great day Jesus Jesus precious Jesus we have the victory Amen. some of us feel just a little odd sometime having use the online facilities. How many of you have used the online facilities to give? All right, we'll just shake your hand like that a little bit, and you'll be in our prayer. You didn't get to put it in the offering, feel a little uneasy. Plate goes by, and you're thinking, what am I going to do? Just thank the Lord for his goodnesses to you. Shall we pray? Kind Father, yes, you have been so good to us, and you've given us many ways to return our tithes and offerings to you, and we're just so happy that you place it on our hearts to do so. You've given special promises there in Malachi that you'd open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. We're just so thankful for your willingness to give to us and then give again, asking us to return to you faithfully and in a cheerful spirit. And so, dear Father, we lift to you these offerings and the tithe, and we ask that you would multiply your blessings to them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We'd like to ask our ushers if they would pass out for the congregation those materials that are relating to the additional officers that have been filled out. I believe those materials are just beneath the pew at the end. If you would go ahead and pass those out all over the church. While you're doing that, we will continue with the announcements for today. Pastor Hayden, if you would come forward, I understand you have a special announcement that you'd like to bring to the church's attention. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Come on, the first Sabbath of the new year. Happy Sabbath, everybody. All right, praise the Lord, and happy new year to you. Next Sabbath, January the 12th, we would like to have a special fellowship meal downstairs for all of our parents of uh, children 18 years old and under. I would say down to children's ministry about to six years old. If you fall in that category, you have a child or children uh, between the age of 6 and 18. Let me see your hands, please. Let me see your hands. All right, good, good. I'm asking for all of my uh, youth and children ministries to present their calendar for the year to introduce their staff uh, to the parents. We need the parents' support, amen? amen? We need you to drive them to the meetings and to the, all the different events that we have provided for your children. We'd like to introduce you to all of our staff and so from Pathfinders to Roots to EVS to Youth of the Way, uh, each and every one of our children as well as our youth ministries, we would like to make a formal presentation to the parents. So let's get the word out. Uh, it will be going out also through the CPC reporter. Now we'd like to have a meal, but we need your help to bring some uh, dish items. Is that okay? If, you, if your last name is between the letters A and J, Please bring either a main dish, pasta, or a vegetable dish. All right? If your last name is between K and Z, please bring a 
vegetarian meat item or a salad dish, right? We expect a very big group, and so we need everyone's participation to make this a success. And all the ministry leaders, I'm asking if you would be so kind as to bring desserts, drinks, and rolls. Also next Sabbath, hopefully, if uh, there's a young gentleman who will be coming to our church, we will be announcing to you if he's back from his evangelistic crusade. He's scheduled to be here next Sabbath. We will be introducing to the Community Praise Church your new children's pastor. His name is Jose Barrientos, a, a young Spanish filled with the Holy Ghost, a preacher, great guy. I've already met him and gotten to know him. He will be here next Sabbath, and we also want to have a, a meal to, to welcome him and his family. So thank you very much, and we look forward to all the things that will be happening for children and the youth next Sabbath. You have in your hands, as the ushers have passed out to you, a filling out of the offices that were officer position, ministry leader positions that were not completed by the nominating committee at the end of this year in the November, December time frame. As we had done with the nominating committee report, we passed that out. We allowed you to have an entire week to look that over. We'll continue with that process today. And how the process will go is you have that additional names and uh, positions in your hand. We'd like to receive at this time a, a motion from the floor that uh, we accept these names and we'll have a second, but we will not vote You'll have an entire week to think about that, and we'll vote on next week. You're following me? So we'll have, okay, we have the, uh, the move. Is there a second? Okay, we will table the move. We will table the actual vote on those names that you have on your, in your hands until next week. Okay, you're with me with that. Thank you. Jim Sanders, I understand that you, sorry. Jim, could you come? Hey, Wayne. How you doing? Hey, happy Sabbath, Jimmy. Good to see you this morning, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 man. I was uh, finally got in that place. You, you know? got into the house, huh, man? Yeah, man. Oh, Le Chateau in. Jimmy Sanders, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's a little tight, but I stretched in. You stretched in. A lot of people are stretching in nowadays, man. I just yeah. got out to do it. So I hate, with the economy. you know, don't, don't let me pry in your business, but, you know, just because I want to get there one day myself, what's a mortgage on something like that, man? Just Taxes are high in PG County. Uh, aren't they? Yeah. Tax insurance about uh, 38 3,800, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, well, that's not bad. Yeah, you, know, you could do it. It's yeah. doable. And God is good, isn't he, man? Yeah, I know he's man, real he's good because I see you drive up in that nice European yeah, sedan yeah, there. Man, yeah, man, God is really good, good isn't he? Yeah, he's blessed. He takes yeah. care of you. Yeah. Um, but I had a little issue about really? tithing. Tithing? Yeah, it's been a little bit. Man, you know, funny that you should mention tithing, Jimmy, because I've been struggling. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. See, I have a little different take on that than most people. Really? How do you tithe? Well, See, I believe since the Lord gives me a good job to pay my bills, right. that first I take out the big things. You know, yeah, the, the yeah, main yeah. bills that I have to pay, I take yeah, that out first. Because I think he would expect me to make sure my house, you know, right, my right. family's taken right, care of. Right. And then, you see, the stuff that I would just spend, the extra money, oh. he knew I would get then I have 10% oh, on that. Yeah, I'm working on it, for but, but I just the tie for inflation. That's that. Yeah, that. I, mean, I like I how you put that. that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. That, is you know, that's it, gonna help it, with my new it house. is, man. Your new, uh, yeah, your yeah, new your house. New house yeah. Cause yeah. that's what people don't understand. See, I don't drive a Ford, so I can't quite afford, yeah, you know, to pay pay that 10% off the top, man. Yeah, they all these cars. about a financial seminar today. What what are they? A financial seminar at church? Yeah. After church, they really? Church here and. Man, I don't know, with Jimmy. The real estate market, real the estate finance, market, finances. you know, some of the banking, the write downs, all this. And I bet it's geared toward Christian people in today and all well, that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. what the years are. You know, if I feel like it, I might stay, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, they said they're going to have food. Food? Food. Oh, well, yeah. I'm going to tell you, Jimmy, I could take every free meal I can get. They're going to so, feed uh, everybody. They're going to feed everybody? Everyone? All of them. Well, how do we know who's going to be here for the food and who's going to be here for the financial seminar? I don't know. You know I how they do. Let's look in their eyes. They say look in their eyes. <laughs> well, it starts at 3 o'clock today. 3 o'clock? Yeah. I'll see you there, buddy. Right. Thank you.
a new take on tithe. We have to be here. Ella Palmer has pointed out to uh, make an update on the name of, uh, it should be Vita Kelly for uh, Deaconess, V-E-T-A. Yes. If you would just make a note of that, um, all right. We have just a couple of items and we're, we're, we're finished here. Sorry for the delay. The uh, pastors, the office will be uh, essentially closed on this week coming Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, at least a portion of Thursday, the pastors will be at a retreat planning and wrapping up plans for 2008. There are issues and concerns that come up. Please see our head elder, Frank uh, Baker. So keep that in mind this coming Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We'd encourage you in the bulletin to pull out the announcements, and especially we'd have you to look at, we've just seen announcement number one, but look at two, three, four, and five. Uh, please look at those. We'd like to thank uh, Sabbath School for being patient with us today. If you are visiting with us first Sabbath in 2008, please stand at this time. If you are visiting with us here, first Sabbath in 2008, please stand. Amen. Amen. Just look around the room there. Please remain standing, and we'd like to say thank you for coming this first Sabbath in 2008. And CPC, if you're near some of these very lovely people, just shake their hand, give them a great smile, and just say thank you so much for coming. And indeed, thank you so much for coming. Now, for those of you who will be wondering where to take your children, the children for Sabbath school, the children meet throughout the building, and usher or a deacon will certainly help you. The adults will be meeting here in the sanctuary for Sabbath school. We see that some of you are back from vacation. Welcome, and the Lord has been good to us. Thank you very much. Let us stand as we close. I want to be fair to those of you. We had 57 people sign up for Bible studies from this service. I hate for you to have to come all the way back after second service today to have a discussion with us about when we're going to have Bible study. So we'll meet with those. If you, if you, if you can come back this afternoon, fine. Right after church, we'll meet with everybody. It's about 100 and some people now who want to take Bible studies. And we'll meet with you. But if you, don't, if you can't come back, we'll try to get word to you. Uh, watch the website. We'll post the time on the website. We decided for the Bible study. We want to work it so we don't have to make an extra trip. We want to work it so we don't conflict with other meetings. And we're probably not going to do it every Sabbath. But we'll try to do at least two Sabbaths out of the month. So if you can't come back after service, uh, second service, to meet with us, look to the website. Court Reporter will have the time and the place. I'd like to start the Bible study actually next Sabbath next Sabbath, and the next Sabbath subject will be how to study the Bible. Start there, okay? So uh, look for a time. It's probably going to be around 3, 3.30. Look for that time. Thank you. Let's sing our benediction song till we meet again. May his peace be with you till we meet again. May his peace be with you till we meet again.
Happy Sabbath, Happy New Year's, and please be seated. Thank you.